When you are MIG welding, you're going to want to have these four items around your MIG welder pretty much the entire time when you are welding. First and foremost, the number one thing you want to have around your welder are these guys. These are MIG pliers. Uh, I, I like to refer to them as MIG snips. The reason why I call them MIG snips is the primary use for these things for me uh, when you're MIG welding is snipping your electrode wire. Uh, to the correct stick out length. Okay, so of course you just go ahead and stick the wire in there into the recess Clip and you should have a good stick out, but they're very versatile They have other uses if your nozzle if you have a screw in nozzle and that gets uh, gummed up They have pliers for the nozzle. They also have pliers for the contact tip. So if you need to remove a bad contact tip they have some They have a pliers right there That'll help you do that. Now, if you get too much spatter buildup on the inside of your nozzle, you can see we got a little bit in there right now. What we can do is we can use these guys and either put it on one of these and then just curl it around or you can use both depending on where you need to get to. Uh, so very versatile and always should have those around. Now, next, when you're talking about welding, Anytime you're talking about welding, you're talking about cleanliness next to godliness. You should always have a very clean weld zone. When you're prepping your material, you want to have it shiny, you want to have it silvery. You can't have any dust, dirt, debris, oil, rust, dirt, paint, whatever. It's got to be gone. So every time you are welding, it's always a good idea to have a stainless steel wire brush around. Stainless steel, only stainless steel for all of your metal products. Um, this is going to come in handy in between tacking and welding. You're going to get a lot of carbon burn buildup after your welding. So what you want to do is you want to remove that carbon burn with a stainless steel wire brush. Now here's the thing I said for all of your metal products. If you take a carbon steel brush and then you brush, you use that brush for aluminum, what's going to happen is you're going to contaminate your aluminum weld zone. You're going to have little particulates of steel dust in there. Steel melts around 2400 degrees. Aluminum melts around 1200 to 1400 degrees. Guess what's going to happen? Those little steel particulates are just going to honker down in your weld zone and they're not going to go anywhere. They're just going to create a big pocket and you're going to have a bad day. So stainless steel, keep them all separate. All right. And that is your brush. Now moving along, when you are when you are welding on stick or on MIG, MIG specifically, uh, you're, you're going to want to have this stuff around. Okay, uh, This is spatter protection for your nozzle and contact tip. I call it tip dip. Uh, these guys call it nozzle dip. Essentially what this is, is this is a petroleum based product that lubricates your contact tip and the inside of your nozzle. So what happens? Well, spatter is flying out of the weld zone the entire time you are welding and it can also go up inside of your nozzle. So if you get buildup uh, onto your nozzle and onto your contact tip, what happens is most of the time, most machines, your contact tip is live, okay? Your nozzle usually is insulated from the current going through it. But if you build up a conductive metal bridge in between your contact tip and your nozzle, you're going through your weld zone, you accidentally touch down, this is going to lead to what's called double arcing. You're going to have an arc point at the edge of your nozzle and of course at your electrode wire. Higher voltages, once again, you are going to, eh, one out of 10 times, you're going to actually weld your nozzle to your piece. And that's not good because these are a little bit more expensive than contact tips. So to prevent buildup on the inside of the contact tip and the nozzle, all you have to do Get this hot first. You want a hot nozzle. That means do a little welding with it first. Then dunk it in up to the crest of the nozzle. You know, that's what some nozzles are going to be about an inch to the crest. Some are three quarters to the crest. Up to about the crest of the nozzle. Pull it out. Hit it with a little shield gas. Push out the excess. And then go back into weld. Okay. This will actually uh, make your nozzle and your contact tip last a lot longer. Another reason. Build up reduces your shield gas port. The face of where your shield gas is coming out, it reduces that. So what happens? Well, you reduce your shield gas, uh, becomes turbulent or what have you, poor welding. So that's also something to consider. 
if you build up enough uh, spatter on the inside as well, you're moving through the weld zone, you accidentally knock this, it falls into your weld zone, you got contaminated steel falling into your puddle, again, leaving, uh, leading to bad welding. So try to avoid all that, use this stuff, it's great, it works, I highly recommend it. Okay, so that's tip dip. Now, last but not least, I say that quite a bit, this guy, this is soapstone. Soapstone is a non-inclusionary element that you can use to mark on your metal. So if you're doing lines, you're doing surface welds or practices, you want to follow a line, you can use soapstone. Now, here's the deal with soapstone. Uh, it's not my preferred method of marking on my metal. If I'm fabricating something, I want more accuracy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a scribe if you want the most accurate weld, or I use a marker that's weld safe. Um, most of the time I'm going to go to the scribe, especially for cuts, for marking on my material. Obviously you're just scratching your surface, so you're not going to get any contaminants in the weld zone at all. So that's a plus. So these are the four things that you want around your welder at all times when you're welding.